Welcome to the Government IT Podcast from Converge One Government Solutions, featuring expert discussions around cloud solutions, cybersecurity, modern workplace, enterprise networking, and customer experience for government and civil agencies. And now, here are your hosts, Ryan Heath and Julian Foster. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me today, Ryan. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, it was great. Uh, it's getting pretty cold out here in our neck of the woods. It is. It's wintertime now. Actually, you just got from got back from California and got to meet some of the, the 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 people that we work with out at Zoom Communications, right? Yeah, went to Zoomtopia um, in San Jose. So it was great to see everybody in person for the first time. I think, geez, at least since you know 2019, 2018. Right. So ran into a lot of old friends, uh, which was great to see. Got to meet a lot of new people, so a lot of new connections made. Excellent. So overall, how was the experience? I mean, you you, uh, you got you got to run into some people that we've worked with and um, demos and keynotes. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the demos were right on. Um, they showed very well, which is, you know, nice because we have to kind of go through that process with our customers and show those demos. Mm -hmm. So it was good to see how they kind of ran the demos. Um, but it was also, you know, a nice kind of added feature was having the experts there to ask the questions, kind of do deep dives. You know, any pointed question that I had, they just had the, the response and was ready to go. And they had a lot of new stuff to show this year, right? Um, they're They're getting into email and calendaring, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, email and calendaring. So now it kind of really, you know, kind of mimics the Microsoft Teams um, aspect. That's good, especially for the smaller customers. Um, now you can have that one platform that kind of, you know, runs all your communications. And then uh, did I understand correctly that they're offering uh, sign language interpreters now? Yeah, so you can schedule a, an interpreter. Um, you know, you set up your meeting, you know, you need that service and that's something that they can offer to you. So then they can do that in many different languages. And what would be, um, you know, some of the benefits of this, um, you know, obviously for Zoom meetings, but do you see this being used or did they even mention, you know, how it might be uh, applied in, in use cases? Yeah, well, definitely in education space, um, you know, all the way through elementary um, to higher ed. Um, I've seen this used in the past within the court systems mm -hmm. um, and healthcare as well. Interesting. So they're really taking uh, some pretty big steps to to sort of branch out their service offerings and, and become much more of a unified communications platform than just, you know, online meetings. Correct. Yeah, I think they've been, you know, listening to their user base and you right. know, what kind of things do they need to be able to do their business better. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'll start adding those features and functionalities to the platform. Yeah. And so the, the event I was thinking about, the event was the first time since the pre-pandemic that they've held the event. And I mean... The whole world has changed significantly since then, but particularly Zoom is, you know, Zoom has become like Kleenex and Google, right? <laughs> As a result of it. it sure have. <laughs> yep. um, so, you know, they did a, a good job just in the hybrid aspect too. So there was a lot of things that were online based um, that mm -hmm. they didn't have at the event. Everything was recorded. Yeah. Um, so you can always just go back and relive it. Yeah. I think they're going to have all of the, uh, for anybody that's interested, I think they're going to have all the recordings up for a year. Uh, they expire, yep. right? I guess probably right before the next event next year. Um, and then what about uh, some of the video uh, production and, and sort of um, event production uh, tools that they've added? I understand they've made some changes to teleprompting and whiteboard and there's uh, AI directing or AI driven intelligent, intelligent directing. Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, part of that is the open environment that they have. Um, so the APIs, et cetera. So like Pitch Hub has a really good teleprompter. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited to give that a go. I think that's going to be very useful, especially during large webinars. You know, right. if someone's not really accustomed to to speaking on Zoom or they get uncomfortable, just something really good that they can easily flow through. You know, it just makes it a, a little bit less intense on that individual, you know, going through presentations. Right. And then the intelligent you know, the director. Yes, yeah, so with the intelligent director, I mean, they have, you know, multiple cameras you can use and the AI will kind of pick out the best video angle. So if you're in a, you know, like a boardroom, instead of just having that one angle that, you know, shows everybody, you can have multiple cameras and it, it zooms in on the speaker or if somebody's talking sideways, they will switch cameras to actually the front of the face. So, yeah, we know. did the, uh, we did the executive walkthrough with them. And I remember that was a really um, uh, high impact part of the presentation. We're going to be, um, we have a recording of that, which we'll be uh, putting up in pieces uh, on our YouTube channel so that people can check out all of these various features that are part of the Zoom platform now. Um, but that was one I thought yeah. was really interesting how it just automatically picked not just the person to look at, but what angle to look at that person was very cool. Yeah. And, and you know, the, back in the day, just five years ago, there was, you know, things out there that were like that, but you were talking twenty, thirty thousand $30,000, you know, for each add-on camera. 
Um, and then a lot of design work and acoustic work that would have to kind of go into it. Right. Um, but now a lot of that's removed and you're, you're talking pretty low price, you know, thousand dollar, $2,000 camera, you know, so it's really, it can be brought to the masses a little more. Yeah. Have, yeah. Have much good much more accessible, high end meeting capabilities, uh, with a much lower barrier of entry. Yep. Absolutely. Interesting. And, um, you know, speaking of the fact that we're, you know, that, that we're, uh, you know, we're taking a lot of the things that we're recording webinars and podcast episodes, uh, which we also video and, and are going, going to be putting up on YouTube. Um, they're doing uh, smart recording with smart chapters, right? So that, you know, that, that takes back, takes away some of the process and post-production of having to identify you know, each section manually. Yeah. You know, it really helps if, if not even just for post-production, but anytime that you want to kind of go back and like, oh, did I hear that correctly? You know, where is that within the meeting? And you can kind of chop that up. Um, right. So the, the way that it, it chops it up are kind of the, the different you know conversations that were had. It's just a really easy way to kind of backtrack and, you know, really look at your recorded meetings that way. And I think another big play on their part, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the fact that they're moving into, they're, they're making more of a push into contact center capabilities, right? Yes. Yeah, so they've been working on that for a while now. So, you know, got that released. It looks like a pretty good, strong contact center. Um has all the major features and functionalities, you know, from day one, and they're going to keep adding to it. So I think that's going to be something that's just going to grow uh, in their space pretty rapidly, you know, compete with the Genesis, et cetera, you know, over the next year or two. Another key feature that was announced is uh, survivability built into the platform. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think this is going to be a major key feature for especially the large enterprises. You know, so previously within your collaboration space, you would have some type of survivable system in case your, you know, WAN breaks, your internet breaks, you have no communication back to your core. Um, so now you can put a Zoom server, just a virtual server uh, at your location, can support up to 5,000 uh, phones. So oh, they're wow. working on scalability um, up and down. So it fits the um, you know, majority of their customer base. Uh, but you know, for a cloud, you know, that's kind of an issue for people that don't want to go to cloud. Um, you know, If the cloud goes away, you lose connectivity, your internet gets cut, how can you function? Mm -hmm. So this, this offers solves uh, that layer of redundancy. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Interesting. So we talked earlier about the fact that they're using uh, the pitch hub teleprompting uh, capability. Were there any other sort of partner manufacturer announcements uh, made? Oh, there's a ton of them. Um, and especially with the kind of the openness that they have with the APIs, there's a lot of uh, software partners that are getting into that that space. So it, it's going to grow tremendously over the next you know year or two, just the, um, you know, the partners that are going to be added on, features, functionalities that you can go through the marketplace and purchase. The ones that I found kind of real interesting were the, the Palo Alto on the security piece. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a subscription piece where it will suck off the full end-to-end -end components and give you all the matrix you need uh, for troubleshooting, you know, call issues, et cetera. So if you have SD-WAN, no matter what connectivity you have, it's going to go from endpoint all the way to the cloud and back. So it gives you that holistic, you know, view of really where the the issue was located during the meeting. So so that was Palo Alto and, and there was also Poly and Logitech, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they had very big booths there. Um, you know, they have new cameras, new speaker sets setups. Um, so all integrated into Zoom natively. So it just shows up as an endpoint, very easy to control with it. You know, so everything from controlling the room, the cameras, scheduling. So they're kind of their one interface can kind of do all that now. So it sounds like it was a, a really interesting event. A lot of a lot of uh, very cool and interesting features and more importantly, extremely useful uh, features were announced. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to, to add any standouts that we might have missed? You know, what, what kind of repressed me after kind of, you know, going through the three days there was just the innovation on the platform itself, you know, adding thousands of new features and functionality within a year. I thought that mm -hmm. was, you know, pretty impressive as these features and functionalities mature, they add new ones. It's just going to kind of strengthen the platform, but they've been able to just add things that are kind of, you know, little game changers in their space to the mm -hmm. platform. Uh, I just don't see, you know, too many competitors in that space being able to do that. Okay, cool. Well, uh, thank you, Ryan, for your time today. It's good to have you back on the East Coast. <laughs> and uh, appreciate it. Um, you know, if uh, we'll uh, we'll put some information down in the uh, description uh, with some links to how you, people can reach Converge from Government Solutions uh, to engage with any Zoom implementations. We also have some more materials that we're going to be putting out in the coming weeks uh, and months with Zoom. Anything else you'd like yeah. to add there? We're really looking forward to kind of 
putting a lot of proof of concepts in place. So if anybody wants a demo proof of concept, we got hardware partners. Poly is, is an example. You can get some phones through them for the demo um, on site. I think that's just the best way to do it. You kind of, you know, try it out. It's real easy for us to do. We can get it done within 24, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. You're up and running, got something to play with. You know, that's just the kind of best way to see what their platform is about and how everything is, you know, on that kind of one, one management interface and you get every right. feature and functionality that you really kind of need at this point. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time today. I'm really looking forward to doing uh, more of these with you over the coming weeks and months, and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you.